Hello Year 7 and welcome back to Week 1. We're now on Lesson 3, Refraction. But before we get going on Refraction, let's have a look at a uh, recap on Lesson 2, Reflection. So, we had two types of reflection in yesterday's lesson, specular reflection and diffused reflection. Specular was reflections of smooth, shiny surfaces, like a reflection of our smooth, flat lake, and diffused reflection was reflections of our stormy, uh, rough lake, where the light is reflected in all directions. So, what I want you to do in a minute is pause the video and have a go at writing down one to seven and write true or false and test yourself on these seven questions. So pause the video now and have a go. Okay, hopefully you managed to answer those one to seven questions. Now here are the answers. Pale and shiny surfaces are good reflections and dark and rough surfaces are not Good reflectors. And the image in a plane mirror is laterally inverted. The angle of incidence is always equal to the angle of reflection. Light travels far faster than sound, 300,000 kilometers per second for that matter. The image on a, in a plane mirror is bigger than the objects, that is false. And the image is the same distance behind the mirror as the object is in front. Well done if you got seven out of seven. So now looking back and thinking about yesterday's lesson, can you remember what all of these different things are called? Point on your screen to which one is the incident ray. If you pointed there, well done. Which is the mirror surface? You pointed there, well done. What's the reflected ray? Point to that. Well done if you pointed there. What is our line of normal? Well done if you put it there. Our angle of reflection. Well done if you put it there. And our angle of incidence. Well done if you put it there. And remember, our angle of incidence is equal to our angle of reflection. So we're going to get on to refraction. And our learning objectives for today are to know what refraction is and how light bends towards or away from the line of normal when it changes medium. So if you look at these three pictures, they don't look right. That polar bear looks like its back has been cut off. That pencil looks like it curves, and that spoon, well, it just doesn't seem to line up. Why is this happening? This is due to refraction. So, do you know the answers to the following questions? What is refraction? Why does refraction happen? What happens when light hits a glass block at an angle? And what can you say about the refracted ray compared to the incident ray? when light travels through air into a glass block at any angle. Well, how does light reflect? So how fast light travels depends on the material which the light is traveling through. So when light enters a different material, so for example, from air into glass, the speed of the light is changing because our glass is a more dense medium and this causes the light to bend or in scientific terms refract so as you can see here in this diagram the light's coming in at an angle to the glass and then it, as it enters the glass it refracts so the speed of the light is affected by the density of the material through which it's traveling similar to when you get in a swimming pool of water you can't walk as fast as you can in air. It's because it is more dense. There are more particles in a smaller area. So when light enters a more dense medium from air into glass, its speed decreases. So that wave is slowing down. And that 
is why refraction is occurring. So what we're going to show you is light entering a glass block and then leaving a glass block and refraction. Okay, Year 7, I hope you enjoyed that demonstration. Even though it was a triangular block, you could still see the light reflect, refract towards the line of normal, which if we remember from last lesson, is a 90 degree angle to the medium or perpendicular. So our light came in, it refracted towards the line of normal. So when light hits a medium, if it is a denser medium, it refracts towards the line of normal. If it is a less dense medium, so air, it refracts away from the line of normal. So we then have a second line of normal where it hits again, and then as you can see, it then refracts away. So it refracts towards the line of normal because our glass block is more dense than air, and then it refracts away from the line of normal as it's leaving because it's entering back into air, the same angle at which it entered the glass block. So it's slowing down, bending towards the line of normal because it's a more dense medium, and then speeding up again and bending or refracting away from the line of normal because it's entering a less dense medium. Okay, so if it enters perfectly straight to the block though, it's slowing down, but it is not bent because it is entering along the line of normal. So if you shine the light straight into a glass block, it will shine straight through and will not refract. So what are the labels for this diagram? What I want you to do is pause the video now and try and copy down this diagram. And then what I want you to do is try and either add the labels yourself as I go along, or if you're stuck, use the labels that I am giving you. So our angle of incidence, it's the same as our reflected wave from earlier this lesson and yesterday. So it's gonna go there. Our glass block, is going to be our dark blue block here. Our refracted ray is going to be the line in the middle, our wave that is refracted. Our angle of refraction is going to be here, smaller than the angle of incidence because the wave is refracted towards the line of normal. Our incident ray is the ray coming into the glass block and our line of normal, as we know, is 90 degrees or perpendicular to the medium. So if you didn't get that, pause the video again and copy down those labels for me. So why, when we look at something in glass at an angle, does it not look like it's in the right place? So if we have a pebble, what we actually see is it has moved, okay? So our eye doesn't understand refraction. So we see the actual object in the wrong place. Our brain assumes that the rays have traveled in a straight line and it's filled into forming an image where it thinks the light ray came from rather than where it actually came from. So the archer fish is a predatory fish that shoots jets of water at insects near the surface of the water. So type in that video link and pause this video and watch what the archer fish is like. So we would think that the prey is straight line from us if we're underwater. However, we now know that it's not the case. Where the prey actually would be is at an angle because that wave is refracting towards the line of normal when it hits the water. But the archer fish has learned 
how to shoot the jets of water and understands refraction of light in water so that it can hit its prey even from underwater. So, what we're going to show you is a cool experiment that you can try at home called the disappearing coin experiment. So we're going to show you how it works and then you can have a go with your parents at home. What we can see here, students, is a refracted wave. So here we've got our uh, incident wave. We've got our reflected wave here. And now if you see, the wave is curving towards the line of normal. So because it's entering a more dense medium, it curves towards the line of normal. And then when it exits the more um, into less dense medium, so air again, it then refracts away from the line of normal. So that is wave refraction. So hopefully you are or have tried that experiment at home. If not, pause the video and go have a go or try it at the end of this lesson. So we're going to try and explain why it happens. So can you please copy down the two diagrams on the bottom right hand side? The one where the coin is invisible, where there's no water in the cup, and then the diagram on the right with the coin at the bottom, the water on your eye. And then can you add for me a light ray? So using a pencil, can you add for me a light ray to show why your eye can see the coin when there's water in the cup, but not when there's not any water in the cup? And then can you also then write for me an explanation on how the trick works? So pause this video and do both of those tasks for me now. Okay, hopefully you managed to do that. If not, these are the answers. So your ray diagram should look like the ray diagram on the bottom left. And the reason that you can see the coin is the water refracts the light rays coming from the coin because the water is more dense than air. So the light ray is refracting towards the line of normal and then away from the line of normal when the light ray leaves the water, as can be seen on the bottom left. If you didn't get it right, fix up your diagrams now and your explanation. Um, and pause the video. If you got it right, well done, and you can keep going along with me. So, you've got another task to do, this one filling in the blank spaces. So can you copy down the statements on this uh, slide? And then, using the words at the bottom, can you fill in the three blank spaces? Hint, two of the words are not needed. So pause the video, Use the diagram on the right to help you with those answers and have a go at filling in those three blank spaces now. Well done if you got it managed to get that right. So when we put a pencil in a beaker of water, it looks bent. It's, that's because the light is refracted as it's leaving the water because it's entering air, which is a less dense medium, which means it is traveling faster in the air than it is in the water. So we're gonna show you one more demo, which is light waves hitting a uh, glass block in water using our ripple tank. So the hint here is that the light parts in the video are wave crests and the dark parts are wave troughs. If you're a bit confused about why it looks like that, look at the picture below. So there's a coin in there, but because of refraction, we're gonna watch the coin's position change. So we currently can't see the coin, but if we pour some water in, the light bends as it enters the water because it is a denser medium, and it is bending so that we can now see the coin. I haven't moved my phone, but we can now see the coin. So I hope year seven, you enjoyed that video, that demonstration. Now, what we've got for you to finish the lesson is a little quiz. So 
Can you pause the video, please, and have a go at answering these questions one to six and writing whether they are true or false? So pause the video now and have a go at this quiz. All right, let's mark them and see how you did. So the speed of light does not depend on the material through which it's traveling. That is obviously false. As we've shown, light refracts because it is changing speeds due to the material it's traveling through. Light rays traveling from air into glass bend towards the line of normal. They definitely do because glass is a more dense medium than air. Light rays traveling from glass into air bent towards the line of normal. That's false. Remember, air is less dense, which means the light rays will bend away from the line of normal. When light enters a more dense medium, the angle of incidence is greater than the angle of refraction. That is correct. You could have looked at your diagram from earlier in the lesson to answer that question. When the angle of incidence is zero degrees, refraction does not occur. That is also true. If you remember from earlier in the lesson, the light comes straight into a block of glass. It will just keep traveling straight. And then last but not least, the speed of light in glass is faster than the speed of light in air. That is false. Remember, it is slowing down in glass because glass is a more dense medium. Hope you've enjoyed this video and you've managed to complete all of the uh, quizzes and activities throughout this video. Please tune in tomorrow for your next lesson, Year 7.